In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an eyedropper, water, and acrylic paint to make the most mysterious collage papers that will make people wonder, how in the world did you make them? Hello, my name is Katherine Raines. I'm a mixed media collage artist, and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. If you see value in my videos, I would deeply appreciate a thumbs up, and if you would subscribe to my channel. Links for all the supplies to make this paper are down below under Show More. And while you're there, you might want to check out my free five-day class where I show you how to take all the papers that I teach during Tune In Tuesday and turn them into beautiful collages the very first try. So let's get into creating collage papers with eyedroppers. So this is what we're going to make today. And this is basically so simple and so gorgeous. Like this paper that I actually did a reel with, I'm in love with this. Um, and I'm going to tell you kind of, I'll tell you exactly how to make these. This is basically just dropping a very watered down acrylic paint um, out of an eyedropper. That's the, the essence of it. So the reason I love this paper and the is because I started using the paper I used last year in a lot of my collages. This is actually a collage that I made for Collage Joy, the class that's opening up in January. But I just loved how dark this was. And I said, I, I gotta have some more of this. And I used all of it. So that's, that kind of motivated me like, yeah, I need to make more of this paper. So let me kind of show you the kind of the lay of the land of how to make this. Um, you want to get a very heavy paper to do this with. You certainly could do it with lighter weight papers, but we're going to abuse this paper tremendously with water. And if you use a lighter paper than a Bristol, you could use a Stonehenge paper, mixed media paper, watercolor. All of those things will take water abuse. So I've already, I had a huge sheet of 18 by 24. I cut it up into smaller pieces. So that's the paper we're gonna use. You also want some kind of spray bottle. I also have off to the side here, I've got a wide brush um, soaking in some water because we're gonna use that. And then you want acrylic paint. Now, I know you've all heard me say this, but I use three primaries. I'm using uh, Quin Magenta Halo Blue and Hansa Yellow Light with some white and black mixed in for variety. And this gives me all the colors I need. Therefore, whenever I do collage papers for Tune and Tuesday, every single Tune and Tuesday papers, they all go together. And that's why I can make collages fairly easily um, out of collage papers that look like they may not look together, look like they go together even though they do. You also need some kind of container to hold the paint. So I have these Petri dishes. So Petri dishes are really cool if you want to store paint for a short amount of time. So I actually mixed paint up. Uh, this was Sunday and this is Tuesday now. And this paint is still perfectly good. Now it's not going to last forever. This is not airtight, but it does hold out the air quite well for a long time. The other, so this is like a short term solution for painting, you know, for any kind of painting projects. Now, I love these little jars. I also have links to both of these, by the way, in the, the show notes. I love this, but I've already used them all. So, any and whatever I use, I, if I can, I want to use glass. Because glass, I can uh, reuse over and over again, so it's more environmentally friendly. You need some eyedroppers. So, I've got two different size eyedroppers here. I've got a whole bunch of these. And I've got a pipette. Any of this will work. This big one, by the way, I got a whole set of these. They're child's, a child's version of, of eyedroppers. They work just as well. And I'm gonna use an MDF board. And that's what I'm actually gonna be creating this art on. Now, an MDF board, and you see this is about three-fourths of an inch thick. You get this in the hardware store. Um, well, you have to buy, a, at least in the US where I live, you have to buy a pretty big sheet of it and they will hand, or they'll cut it, you know, in their big thingamajiggers <laughs> to um, the exact size you want. So for a very long time, I was actually making my art on these. You know, instead of, you know, making my art on cradled boards or even doing it on paper, these only cost like 30 cents a piece. So it made it not precious. So I use these for a very long time. Now I just use them for art demos because I can do this. I can put my paper on here 
And then when I'm done doing whatever I want to do with this one, I just take it off to the side and I put a new one on here. So I've got a whole pile of these uh, sitting ready to go. So before I get to actually showing you how to do this, the technique, I'm going to mix a color up for you. And I'm going to do a series of papers with you in blues because blues is just what really gets me excited. Um, the reds are lovely. And actually the reds is what I showed you in that sample piece, but they're harder to make for some reason. I can do eat blues, you know, without even thinking about them. So I got a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and what I'm really going for, and I've already probably done this wrong, I'm really going for a baby blue, really, really, really light, because it's the one color I don't have. Okay. And it's, it's a little bit lighter than I wanted. I mean, a little bit lighter than I had before. Okay. And then this is really technical now. I'm just going to water it down. That's all I'm going to do. And there's no formula for how much water you put in it. Um, you just want it pretty liquefied because you got to suck this up um, in the, the eyedropper. So I might, need, I might even need more because there's some clumps of paint in here. So I'm going to add a little more. So I know I have the right amount if I can get this to get into the eyedropper. Okay. So I'm just going to put this one aside because I'm not going to start there. So first thing you want to do before you use any paint is you have to completely saturate this piece of paper. Now again, this is a Bristol paper. So I am going to put a lot of water on one side. You can see it automatically starts curling up. I'm going to put it down and put water on the other side and it starts sitting down completely flat. Okay, I'm just going to like, make sure it's really, really wet. And I'm going to take one of my little... Uh, eyedroppers and first thing I need to do is is my paint still not, not this it's kind of gotten a little on the thick side but we'll see let me see if it'll actually draw up into my okay so this needs to be very very wet oh there you go because it won't do this halo thing uh, unless it is very wet now by the way what I'm doing right now and I'll look at right here so it's, it's barely doing anything, and that's because it's already getting dry. So you have to keep it fairly wet in order for it to do the magic. Now, I could just do what I'm doing right now and make this paper with dots on it. And this would be a gorgeous piece of collage fodder. But, you know, it's so tempting to add layers to this, which is what I'm going to do. Although I'm probably going to leave a couple of these just with the dots because I think they're pretty cool. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water because a few of these didn't run. Now, I'm actually going to put this aside just for a minute and get another one out. So this, this one is just painted in white. It's the same exact thing. And again, I'm going to saturate both sides. Let's try the dark. I did the dark blue as a first one. By the way, I can use these little eyedroppers over and over again without, because I'm using all the same colors that came from the same paints. So it's fine that they um, end up in the same eyedropper. You know what I'm going to do this time? I am going to make sure it's really wet. So I just took this out of a water bucket. Now I'm putting a fair amount of water on here because I need this these drops to react. Quickly, but I also have to act quickly. I just, I don't know, that to me is just like really, really beautiful. And again, I could easily just leave, let this sit here. Now, there is a little blob of paint that's me that tells me that I have, I don't have enough water in here, but it's reacting just the way I want it to. So um, I just have a couple blobs of paint that are just going to do different things. Okay, I'm going to put this one aside. You should have seen me on Sunday doing this. I mean, I had, I don't know how many of these all over the floor. And it was, it was just so fun to see what happened with each one of them as I added layers. So we only have, so far, obviously, just one layer. And I'm okay that, you know, my hand, you know, some paint's coming off. That's fine. So let's just try another color. By the way, when you, so this is in a, kind of a medium blue. If I put this... And one that's darker. So now I've got basically two colors in here. Theoretically, um, some of both of them are going to show up. That's the idea. Although these colors are so close to each other. 
of that. I think that's so pretty. And again, this is only the first layer. But the first layer is good enough for me. This is actually what, see, it's already too dry right there. Um, this is actually what I saw demoed on YouTube by another artist. And she, that's all she did. You know, she dropped it, you know, and called it Sabori paper. I don't care what she calls it, by the way. It doesn't matter. Um, but I don't think it was Sabori paper. I think Sabori paper really is uh, when you're folding paper. Actually, I'm going to leave this just like it is. But I am going to just pull it to the side. Take the first one. Now, because this, this is highly absorbent paper, the Bristol, and this board is highly absorbent. So the, all this water, a lot of it's going into the board, which is kind of nice, actually. I mean, you see this, there is little water on here. You know, it's wet, but there's not much water on there. So let's start creating some layers. So this might have to spray this. And I'm going to take this baby blue and see what happens. Now, this is a complete experiment. You never know. Like the red ones, um, I have a whole pile of red, which I'm gonna show you in a little while. I couldn't recreate the yummy paper that I showed you in that first collage. It's just like, I couldn't make it happen again. So I'm gonna try to make it happen with you. So I, I love that right there. Now, um, the question is, I think I'm just gonna let this go to the side. Now the question is what to put on it. Um, now it's already, again, the water's you know pretty much soaked, soaked in to the board and the paper, and just putting water on it gave me some interesting effects. So I'm gonna try some dark blue on top of the light blue. Oh my gosh. I mean, you can see how once you start doing this, it's like, oh my gosh, now what will happen? You know, I just wanted to keep going with layer upon layer, and if you watched my reel or my short, I did keep going and going and going, okay. Well, that's, well, that's a start. So let, let's let that sit for a second. We'll bring this one back. You know, these MDF boards, they're good for all kinds of uh, paper making because you don't have to worry about, like this paper is so saturated, I really don't want to lift it up and put it on my drop cloth for drying because I want it to dry first. So I've got, I don't know how many, probably 15 of these boards. I probably have more than that, but I have 15 of right here. And this way I can just let them dry right here and I can come back to the same thing without worrying about what's gonna to happen to it. So I am gonna add a little bit of water to it just so I can get some reaction going. Question is what to put on it. So let's try some of the baby blue. And this, there's some dark, there's some dark paint in here. Oh gosh, yum. Okay, at the moment I'm loving this, but we're not done, oh no. In fact, I think while we're here, let's try. So this is very, very wet. The paint itself is wet. So I'm gonna take a round brush, saturate it really good, and see what happens if I just hit. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see this as well as I can, um, but to me, this is complete yumminess. You know, all those drops. And by the way, I'll probably add another layer to this too. Like, why leave this? Let's go to this one. I put a little bit of the blue in here. And then I'm going to load the rest of it with this dark green. And let's see if I can get any reaction going. I may need it. Yeah. Well, that wasn't bad, actually. But I'm going to spray it down to the tiny bit. Now, what you see here in terms of what it's doing when it dries, it looks so much different. I mean, I can leave the paper and go, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. I'm trying to decide what to put on here. And by the way, this paint in particular is so, I mean, it's fine if I was gonna paint a picture with it, but it is pretty solid. I don't know whether I expose it to the air, um, but it's not gonna go up into a, um, a pipette or a uh, eyedropper needs more than this by the way this is a you know when I'm done you know, showing you this demo I am going to dump this out and I just want you to know I'm not dumping this in the sink I'm actually I've got a pretty environmentally sound system for getting rid of this paint I can't store this paint I'm not gonna be doing this I'm gonna make all the papers I can right now and then do something else with this um, but what I do is I drop it 
I have a bucket right next to my art sink in my studio. Let me let this have a little rest. I'll bring this one back. Um, so anyways, I bring, I put the, the excess paint, I pour it in a bucket, and I have a bucket that's been filled up with excess paint probably for two months now. And then when it's too big or it smells, I take it outside and I've got a bucket with about six inches of playground sand. It's like a five gallon bucket. I pour it in there and then I just wait for it to evaporate. Now, unfortunately, I live in a very shady place. So the evaporation happens incredibly slow, uh, which is a problem here. So I just heard about a product. This is um, Odelia. You're probably listening to this. Um, she turned me on to a product that um, Golden, oh, that's so pretty. Golden cells um, that actually kind of speeds up the evaporation process. I think it's called birch or something like that. If anybody wants to know it, I'll put a link in the show notes. I just, I just love that. I thought some silver might be really good. And I'm also, I've got some silver, as, I mean, some gold as well, because we're gonna do some reds. So, let me water this baby down. Let's see what will happen. Now I've got, I don't know why. I didn't realize there's some blue in here, but I, don't, I think that's fine. Now, you know, this is, uh, what is it, Signole paint? And look how globby it is. But I usually use Nova paints. So all the other things you see me using are Nova. And Nova comes out of the jar, rather liquefied. So I have, you know, I still have to add paint to it, but I don't get those globs. But nonetheless, I'm going to use this because I think silver on blue, and I just <laughs> accidentally dropped it on there. I need more water. Let's see if we can make this work. Let me just try it on this one, because I think this is so pretty, but I'm gonna get a clean dropper. Okay. It's interesting, I love that, but it's, you know, it's already kind of on the dry side. I still love it though. You know, the question is, how do you get yourself to stop? Because I just want to keep adding and, you know, dropping paint. Okay, so let me um, put this one aside. Now, by the way, I could do one of those, you know, fluid acrylic people. They kind of like move this around. That's not what my intention is here, but I certainly could do a little bit of a fluid um, acrylic design. But I want to try that silver, and I may not have enough water in here. We'll see. And while I'm at it, I think this needs more water. It's already um, kind of. I love when it splats like that because it just adds, you know, I like the organicness of it. Okay, I think that, okay, I, I can't leave well enough alone. I'm going to put a little blue. So I, I like when the paint's on top of the paint. I just think that's interesting. Now, what happens with these papers is I just keep going. So, like, this one's not my favorite yet, but if I keep going, it will be. So more than likely, this is going to get a couple more layers. Let me just get a third layer of this one, and then I want to move on to red. Add a little water. Now here's a, a little trick with this. Um, as you're doing this, you want to let the let all the paint kind of seep. Like once I'm done, I'm going to let all the paint seep into here. You know, let it kind of like so I can't see any puddles anymore. And then you want to take it off. You don't want to let it dry on here because it'll actually attach to here. Now you can easily get it off, it's not a problem. Um, you get it off by like spraying water on it and it comes right off. Oh my gosh, now, I just love, I also love the contrast here. You know, um, sorry I'm sniffling, I've had a head cold for a week now. Um, but I love the contrast. I just think that's beautiful. And when you think about it, making, uh, using this in a collage, you know, I would cut off like there. Just imagine that little piece right there in a collage. <laughs> It's gorgeous. Or right there. So I'm not looking at this as a composition. I'm looking at you know, which pieces of this um, would make a beautiful collage. Um, I am going to take a clean round brush and see if I can get some. Yeah, it's not wet enough already. Wow. It's already absorbing into the paper. Get this nice and wet. Wow. It's coming off in clumps because it's not wet, which is, is it's okay. That'll add another dimension to it, but I got a big clump right there. So get that out. Or 
here's another thing you can do. You can kind of like make swirlies. But now it's too dark, isn't it? So now I need to get a lighter color in there just to break things up. And we haven't used this one. But it's, I got to remember to put a little more water in here or it's not going to work. But, you know, just adding the water gave me new variations. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lordy. I mean, this is just like, you can see why you don't want to stop doing this. Okay, put this aside. So first, you can see this is attached. I mean, it is not coming up. However, I can get it unattached, like and split by just adding water to it. So I'm just going to water this down. But now this is sitting up, but I, actually what I want to do is I'm trying to get it to sit down as much as possible. Now this paper is fine, but what I'm trying, in fact, I would use it because there's some corners of here that I really love. Um, but I want to do something, like something is not completely hitting me the right way. I got lots of water on it, so I should be able to get some nice things happening. So I'm going to take a lighter color, take this orange. And by the way, all the rest of them sat down. It doesn't only really matter, but oh, oh my gosh. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I'm going to like it in the end. I like when it's really dark. So here's a dark color that I mixed up. Let's see what happens if I layer a little bit of that on top. Yeah, I like it better already. There's a little bit of green happening, and I'm which is fine because they're all made from the same colors. I mean, that's an interesting design. So for the moment, I'm just going to let that one go. This one's the same way. Um, so I'm going to whip this well. And again, it doesn't matter that I can't get it down all the way. This was actually my experiments from Sunday. Let's see if I can get some splats. No, it's not doing anything. It needs more contrast. I'm gonna take this brighter red. It really wants to curl. But these dark papers in my work is something that really appeals to me. And it's what I used in collage joy for my sample pieces. And I use them so much. Now, what I would do with this, this doesn't look like much probably to you at the moment because it's so wet, but I would let this dry just a little bit and then I want to put something really dark on it. Um, probably darker than that. I've got a darker um, version of that. But right now, it's actually okay the way it is. Um, this would, again, make beautiful collage paper. Red. So let me do one more. Now this one, I saturated earlier. I, I may put a lot of water on it, so it's gonna go flat. So they eventually will go flat if I kept, if I get putting a lot of water on it. So I'm totally saturating it. Okay. So that's nicely laying down. The question is what to put on it. Uh, kind of variegated there. Let's see what will happen. Not enough water. Ooh. Now, because this is so transparent, you know, you can see what's going on underneath, which makes me like this even more. Now, if I put this red on top, now I've got some interesting layers. And what I'll probably do off camera when I'm done is I'll take this really dark color and put some splatters on it. I was doing that here, but it was really too soon. It didn't um, have the same effect that I wanted. Someone called me a mad scientist on YouTube the other day. You might be here. And I really appreciated that actually because that's how I feel. So I think I'm going to stop there and just let these dry. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I love you all. I'm honored that you give me your time every week, whether you're watching live or on the, uh, on the replay. So thank you. And I will see you here next week for Tune In Tuesday. Bye. Mm -hmm.